Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift, the online cycling platform that makes training fun. Here's the Liège, Baston Liège recap. The women's race, shorter, 142 kilometres, but with the same finale, uh, Cote de la Redoute and Rochel Faucon in the plateau and descent to the finish. Annemiek van Vleuk, the big, big favourite for this race. She has Sierra with her, Sarah Martin. I think she she's won it before, maybe the second edition. Last year, Van der Breggen set up Vollering to win a reduced group sprint. She's not here. There's Mulman, Royce, Vollering uh, for SD Works. There's Cavalli. Could she do the triple? She won. What she win? Amstel, Flesh. She's here with a very, very strong team of Brown and Chapman. The breakaway went, Venji, once again, Everyone represented, except is UAE missing out today, not FDJ. Yeah, certainly. And it's a strong group with Marlon Reuser in there. That's the rider we spoke about in the preview of SD Works at the start of the year that could perhaps replace the likes of an Anna van der Breggen scenario where she tries to control it for Vollering. But in all honesty, that her having been in that breakaway is a good move for SD Works and... Yes, like you said, plenty of teams involved. We've got Sarah Martin for Movistar, Leah Thomas for Trek Segafredo, Soraya Paladin for Canyon Sram. We've got Evita Music for FDG, who looks to be stronger and stronger since her recovery of her knee surgery, I think, at the start of the year. So she's looking better and better and might actually find for the top French rider position at the Tour de France. Um, who knows? Then we've got Amanda Spratt, who looks to be better and better as well this year. Kirchman for DSM and Clara Hansinger for Tipco EF, whatever the order of that name is, also in this breakaway. Like you mentioned, UAE missing and also Yumbo. They were both trying to kind of control the gap behind. A minute plus was the gap. And the interesting aspect there to me was that UAE was not necessarily trying to close it down at a certain point because they decided to attack with their front rider in their train. And that rider just started bridging it alone with a gap of one minute plus to that breakaway. Who in their right mind thinks they can close down a gap of one minute plus alone? I don't know. And the more curious things happen at the base of Redoute, like Mulman, Benji. Have you, I've thought about <laughs> this in the hours since. Why did Mulman do a lead out at the base of Redoute with Vollering, not Vollering, Vollering not in her wheel, Van Vlerten in her wheel? And like, I get it. She attacked, she did have a two, three meter gap off the wheel at the base for a, for a time, but then Van Vleuten closed it and she kept pacing and there was a headwind as well and Vollering was trying to move up in the wind. Those two, this gave me, Benji, the same vibes, the entirety of the finale of this as Kopecky, Chantal Van Brook, Black, Roubaix. Yeah, and the added part there is that Reuser was in that front group for for that team in La Redoute as well. So they're basically doing what you are saying but they're also chasing Royster, who is a very good rider to have in the front group as a benefit as a satellite rider or something. So this would be the scenario where you try and force the other teams to be closing down things. And if you are Volring and Molman, in my eyes, you want this climb to be relatively slow because you want to save as much energy as possible for the moment that Van Vleuten gets to decide when she hammers it up one of these climbs. And she had made a, an earlier move before we got to uh, Lara Dude, but in Lara Dude itself, she she went and started hammering it once Molman was done at the front. And she immediately got a solid group near the front already going. And the intriguing part is that she keeps up that attack. And we know that typical Von Vleuten attack is not going to last for five seconds. It's going to last until we get to the damn top of this climb. And she's able to get most of the riders from the breakaway back with Mormon and Volring trying to follow with the likes of a uh, Cavalli also trying to follow there and they are unable to get that wheel because Van Vleuten is just strong at that point and is able to get a gap on the others and she starts crawling back the one leftover rider ahead which is the rider that Mormon was starting to chase earlier her teammate Reusser who was the strongest rider in the breakaway so this all did not make sense for SD Works in my eyes, but from that scenario onwards, we've got two riders ahead, and it's, well, first of all, Von Vleuten, who's looking good at the moment, but the problem is she's with Reuser, and Reuser's never going to ride with her to the next climb, Rocha Falcon, when in the chasing group behind, they've got two teammates, which is Molman and Volring. They might not always ride like teammates, but on paper, they've got the same shirt on, so that's why Reuser was sitting up in the wheel. What do you think of the situation, then? Well, yeah, it... Van Vleuten didn't commit to it. There was a headwind. So she's like, hmm, 
I've done a pretty hard effort on Redoute. She said afterwards she likes two hard efforts in the endurance and a longer race than one. She just dropped Vollering and Mulman easily off the wheel, and they're the big threats. Cavalli she dropped as well. And so she's like, I can pull for 20 minutes into a headwind on the flat whilst multiple domestiques chase me like Evita Muzic, or I can just sit up, wait, and Sierra's in the group two, and then just go again on Rochefoucauld. And that's exactly what she did. The problem was very strong rider countered. FDJ had Grace Brown. She immediately countered in that Carapaz zone, got a good gap of 20 to 25 seconds, and there was Cavalli, Muzic still in the group, AVV, though, did not have to pace. She had Sierra, I think. SD Works put Royster on the front. This reminded me a lot of Quickstep in Tour of Flanders when Asgren got ruined by on a climb, on one of the climbs, and then they came back and then they just started pacing again. It's like you, you know that you're not the ones here, right? You know that you're leading AVV to a certain victory, and that's pretty much exactly what happened. They brought Brown back to like 15 seconds, 18 seconds on Roche. The gap would tumble on there if once they launched. And yeah, Nuviodoma Lippet came back immediately. But before we mention that, our show partners, Zwift, Benji and I, all the last week, we have been using Zwift's meetup feature. It's actually really, really good. You add a friend on Zwift on the platform and then you can just schedule your own ride together and ride in game you can communicate via text in the zwift companion app or of course just via voice in discord which is what benji and i typically do in a discord channel so that's really good for being able to ride with people who aren't in your physical location or maybe you're too busy to get out on the bike or the weather's been too bad so check out the zwift meetup feature if you want a free seven day trial you can go to zwift.com through the link down below base of russia for AVV launches. She has a moment in the wheel for a while, but she just did, like on the Murder We, just the same pace, hard for like two minutes and dropped first following. Then Longa Borghini, Ben Mulman, gets to Brown, drops her, and goes clear over Rochefoucauld. But it wasn't, I thought it was over. Actually, I'm going to say it wasn't over, but I thought it was over. But maybe there is a world where it wasn't. For example, <laughs> Last year, we did not have two teams with two teammates in the group. Mullen, Vollering, SD Works, FDJ have Cavalli and Brown. They just didn't get organized, Benji. I didn't know what the plan was, whether they wanted to go for a sprint. They were sort of dilly-dallying. What would you have done if you were those teams? Because you can't ask Brown to pull on Boncells. You'll go backwards. It's like Lander chasing Remco on the flat. Should Mullen have pulled Boncells or Vollering? I'd argue that once we look at who is the better sprinter of the two, then Volring is the better sprinter. So you can't have a scenario where Molman gets to Van Vleuten because she's likely going to get beaten by Van Vleuten in the sprint anyway. So that's not a scenario you're looking for. You don't want Volring to get dropped as well because you don't want Cavalli to beat Molman at the end, for example. You don't want... Brown is most likely not the rider that will hold on the best on Boncel. You're right in that. So for FDG, we would see Brown... And for SD Works, Mormon doing some pacing, but it looked like Mormon was stronger than Volring on the climb on Bonsell. That left a gap between Mormon and Volring. And yeah, obviously she waited then again, and eventually they went together again. But it was clear that there was not that choice where Volring was the clear leader or Mormon was the clear leader because when they reached the top of that Boncel climb, the gap was larger than the 12 seconds they had on Rochefoucauld. And then we also saw the fact that the group was getting even worse when it comes to cooperation, where at a certain point, Volring skips a turn and then she rides like two turns in a row. Then she skips a turn again. Then we have Mormon doing quite a bit as well when it comes to Brown, obviously the, the bigger engine in this group once she came back after Boncel or was even hanging on towards the end of Boncel. She was super strong. She even got the gap down a bit at a certain point, but she gone through that alone. And Cavalli also skipped a turn at some point. And once those riders are skipping turns, what is Longa Borghini supposed to do? She's got no teammates there. So if you're Longa Borghini, you could work and therefore not necessarily have an easy chance of beating Volring and the likes of Cavalli in the sprint there. You could try and force an attack, but the other teams have riders to control that. It's so intriguing to look at this from the scenario of Longo Borghini. What would you have done if you were Longo Borghini? 
I think collaborating when everyone was sort of working was is fine. Uh, but as you said, once you see Cavalli sitting on, you're like, well, no, I'm not going to pull in you if you have a teammate in here and you're not going to pull as well. That's not what's happening. And so that meant the death knell for that group and the gap went from 15 at its smallest to 25 to 40 seconds with AVV soling away for her second Liège Baston Liège win, probably my first correct prediction of the season, and it <laughs> took probably a one dollar twenty five winner to do it. The heavy favourite Van Vleuten winning as we expected, uh, going clear on Rocha Faucon and Grace Brown. The sprint was even more curious behind with Cavalli leading out. That Brown wasn't in the wheel, she was in the wind, and then Mulman started sprinting, but Vollering wasn't in, in her wheel, and then Vollering closed Mulman, and then Grace Brown got the draft from both the SD work striders and be both in the sprint, with Vollering coming third, Mulman fourth, Longoborghini fifth, Cavalli sixth, Sierra Lippert, Nivia Dama Spratt rounding out the top ten. So two Movistar in the top ten, as well as ob- obviously the win. But yeah, a bit curious from uh, SD Works, whether that will be, I don't know, Benji. Tour de France Fermo X Zwift, they're going to need to sort out what the priorities are. Is it Capecchi stages and yellow for as long as possible? Is it Mulman GC, a great pure climber? Is it Vollering GC? Because right now, I see them both going for their own opportunities. Yeah, it's a similar scenario to what we spoke about uh, last year, and I think at the start of the year as well, when it comes to the leadership of FDG between Cavalli and uh, Utrup Ludwig, that's a similar scenario. There's no clear difference between them on the longer mountains, and therefore it's difficult to choose a rider there. And we don't have necessarily too many longer mountains in the year to decide who is the leader as well. So it's a bit of a guess for certain teams as well going into the Tour de France. So what will happen in that final weekend of that race? And like you mentioned, it's an intriguing quest for them to figure that out or do you think this might be a DS issue because the DS that was in the car today was also the DS that was in the car in Paris-Roubaix Femme perhaps it's a DS issue where that person is not necessarily the most tactical mastermind Vanderbrecher uh, I think uh, it was Stun or something or Dunny Dunny Stun I, I don't reckon it is I don't, mm-hmm. I reckon they know the play I think it's the riders like think Mulman's coming to the end of her career, mm-hmm. and Benji she's stronger than Vollering on both these climbs. She could have dropped her twice, just about. Well, she dropped her on, but ah, no, that's not true. But she was strong, and it's not clear that Vollering's that much stronger than her. And then in the sprint, she was almost faster, and she's coming to the end of her career. Vollering is younger, won this race last year, but as I said in the preview, it was on in my view, largely the coattails of Anna van der Brecher. But she thinks, well, I'm, I'm the woman, I'm the king, of, the queen of this team. And then there's Kopecky and the races, and it's a similar dynamic with Van der Brecher Black, who was going to retire, and then she's like, I'm so good, I'll just keep going. Uh, but she wants her chances. I don't know if you can tell those riders, don't go for your own opportunities. Maybe they'll just, because especially if you're a woman, you're like, well, Volling's not going to win anyway. She's not looked that good. So it's really difficult. I don't know. What mm-hmm. would you do for their tour? How would you approach it? I'd go all in on Kopecky. Oh Well, for the first stages, sure. And definitely that wide road section uh, stage as well. But a team like SD Works can't go to the TDFF and just say, okay, we're not going to go for GC. We're going to go all out for Kopecky. They have to have options there. And I do believe that with Molmon and with Volring, you can't deny that there's still an option for the podium there, and they can still podium the TDFF, even if Von Vleuten dominates that entire race. So I wouldn't say go all out for Quebec and forget about GCI. I do still see a very possible scenario where they end up on the podium with one of their two riders. Like, the climbing of Volring always kind of surprised it on longer climbs. Remember on Burgos last year on Laguna's Denial, where she was stronger than I expected, that she was almost near Von der Breggen towards the end of that climb. I wasn't expecting that going into that race. And yeah, there's going to be competition, but I don't believe they should just give up on GC. They should just make a, like, ideally, there's some preparation race in the coming weeks, perhaps an Itsuya or something, where they can test something out between those riders and figure out who the actual, like, best climber is, something like that. Because it's very difficult to guess on the longer climbs who of the two might actually make it. Because on paper, I'd say Molmon, But when it comes to 
getting towards that final week of the Tour de France, you never know that Volring might actually come out on top on the longer climbs. And without a hierarchy on leadership or without figuring out what your plan is beforehand, it's always going to go bad. And it also depends on how you adapt during the race because you can say at the start of the Tour de France Femme, okay, we're going to play on two horses right now. We're going to bet on two horses for the initial part. And then we'll see who folds first. And well, they probably have to because you can't yeah. beat AVV head to head. So they have yeah, to. Exactly. And next to that, it depends on how that race eventually goes, who ends up as the leader of that team. And you might get a scenario, like you said, where Mormon might not want to ride completely for Volering's GC once she's in the last part of her career. And I understand that from Mormon's perspective, but you're also riding for a team. And I'd argue that while her personal uh, importances are important to her, they might not be towards the team and they might not be good for the team as well. And it goes the other way around as well. It's still a team sport. And I understand that riders have individual demands, but those should not be put above the demands of the team. I agree. Uh, I'm just very, very high on Capecchi, and I think they should just full send that Chemin Blanc stage and see what comes out in the wash before they get to the high <laughs> mountains because AVV in the high mountains is going to be absolutely lethal. We haven't talked enough about her, but unreal season <laughs> like omlu first strata second only kopecky could beat her uh ronda van vlander in second i'm still fourth kopecky beat her in tour of flanders flesh second liege first she has according to this a gap until the giro rosa which she's doing in june although there are some spanish world tour stage races coming up with benji mentioned that be good to see how these riders are climbing but yeah AVV, how old is she? Turning 40 this year, just incredible um, level. She said on Strava she did her best ever five-minute power, which means she could just literally keep doing this for years and years and years. She's that good at the moment. And the Movistar team is getting better and better around her. Sierra, as I mentioned, a huge addition for that team. But, yeah, incredible the age. Any, any last thoughts, Benji? I do want to mention when it comes to Van Vleuten, I think after Flesh, there were some people on the internet saying, oh, Van Vleuten seems to be almost washed. She's, uh, she's near the end. She's near the end. But that clearly isn't the case. And I think that people just overrated her punchy ability in the same way that with the men's people overrated the punchy ability of Pogacar for Flesh as well. Yes, Van Vleuten has hadn't gotten proper results in, in that race in Flesh and so forth. But she's always, in the last couple of years, definitely been the rider that needed the longer efforts to try and build out gaps and that makes it harder to do so on the smaller climbs in Amstel and Fletch for example and I think the longer climbs in today's race will really the key to delivering her ability to dropping riders and like we mentioned Tour de France Fun Mountain Stages do follow that up and do promise a lot of fun racing for us but just wanted to uh pop that in the podcast here. Looking forward to it lots of exciting stuff coming up we have Romandy at uh, next week and then Benji and I are heading to Budapest in like scary Benji I think eight days just over a week I am completely unprepared so <laughs> Me <too>. yeah <laughs> we'll be doing let us know if anyone else is going uh we'll be watching the first two stages the uh the Grande Partenza which goes from Budapest and then the TT is all around Budapest, and then we won't see the third stage. Well, I won't. At least Benji can if he wants to, which is out at Peloton Fured, about 100 k's away. Yeah, and I want to add that if you want a question to be asked, because we're going to do a QA and a once uh, yes. we get to Hungary, then drop it below in the comment section on YouTube or throw it at us on Twitter. Or, yeah, that's probably the two ways that we'll do it. We don't have, like, a, a dove system that you can send like does with little letters to us yet so we're gonna have to do it with twitter and youtube comment sections for now if you have questions for us throw it at us and we'll try and respond as many good ones as possible on that podcast as well once we get into budapest and i'm looking forward to it can't wait been a big couple of months and uh it'll be nice to get out of the house and we'll have some good content not just the preview and recaps coming for you on lrcp but thanks as always for listening and of course for swift who are making that trip to budapest possible and we'll see you with romdi tomorrow i think ciao